in this lecture, in this module in fact, we will focus on CT, X-ray based computed tomography. So, I would recommend you actually go through the introduction, signals and systems review, image quality metrics and more importantly, when we started project in the previous module of projection radiography, the physics right was covered that is namely your x-ray generation and how x-ray photons interact with the tissue and uh, the fundamental attenuation law, all those things that constitutes the physics of the modality right was covered in projection radiography. So, when we cover x-ray computed tomography, I would assume you would have already gone through the previous lectures in the previous two topics. Therefore, we will proposition and start with only the instrumentation and then image formation and image quality. The physics of the modality, I would recommend that you read in the previous module okay, of projection radiography. So, without uh, much further delay here, let us again most of the content I will be following the order in uh, the text listed here, clear. So, what are we going to cover? Physics, I said, you should have read it from the previous module. So, we are going to focus on instrumentation and then on image formation. I guess this is a very important module. When people talk about CT, this is an important module and we will talk about X-ray CT. However, you will notice that the, the T part, the tomography, the CT part, the computer tomography part will be used in the other nuclear medicine, right, that we, we will be discussing as a separate module. So, this is a very important uh, topic and actually also very interesting topic. So, I would recommend that uh, um, you kind of uh, uh, pay attention when you are fresh, try to uh, go through these lectures and more importantly as, as I keep repeating, all this is a you know separate module, well established textbooks are there, uh, maybe several vivid you know descriptions, uh, simulations, cartoons, sketch, animations of all this might be there. However, there is no substitute to actually you go reading from where somewhere and also try to get the intuition. So, I will try to help along the way showing some examples, showing some demo or at least how you may want to think, at least the way I think about it that uh, I you know I would like to share. But there is no substitute to you actually going and taking a textbook and reading from that. Okay, You have to have your own imagination of all of the topics that we are going to cover. Okay, so uh, we will get on with it. First is your instrumentation, right? So before we go into instrumentation, right? Uh, even though I told that you are going to uh, use the previous module to learn about the physics, I think it's very important. The way I would like to proposition and take this module, it's actually very historic uh, facts, right? I mean, instrumentation is there, right? All of the material that we are going to cover. You will you will find it is already there, uh, you know, factually. But uh, what I would like to pretend, right? You have to imagine. Can we grow with the with the evolution, right? So when Roy Engen did it, right? It was 1895, right? Some somewhere there, hundred more than 120 years ago. So at that time, what did we have? Right? It kind of opened up, like we said, most people agree it opened up medical imaging with the X-ray first. And then we covered projection radiography. So suddenly when after discovery, you have to have an ecosystem, you create an instrument, right? you have to have a vendor who manufactures it and then the doctors have to be trained and then clinical applications have to evolve where all they think they can use it and uh, make the diagnosis uh, better. So it takes time. It takes time and a lot of, you know, pioneers, the brains of several people have gone into in the evolution of the technology and clinical practice. So, along the way, 
if that solves all the problem right if it is super good if you don't gain something people will not evolve right people will not come up with a newer uh, there, there won't be scope for newer systems right there won't be any need so clearly even though projection radiography is a very uh, important modality even now right you would notice that there was a fundamental limitation right that was always probably haunting the scientists at that point of time so they wanted to overcome it so first recognize what was projection radiography and what was the major limitation projection radiography what did we do oh we reduce the dimensionality we were only using the projection so for example even though we know the object is 3d right we collapse to the plane of the paper so essentially this is so we will oh, so this is a innovation i'm trying in in a typical class when we have a projector right i could i could uh, there will be a screen and i will stand in between the the screen and the projector so i could use my hand and you could actually see the shadow so it will be easier so here i'm going to pretend i'm going to use the optical system so it's not through transmission but get the idea uh, through so what did we do so pretend this is all that, that's your camera right so you're sending it so pretend the analogous to x ray sir but you're seeing this okay? so you had x ray so this is a cube right your rubik's cube so you have different colors right so optically you see it's a 3d thing but what we were doing projection radiography is say for example if i showed you like this right uh, if i showed you like that you will not know whether this is 3d or right you only saw the projection of this so you would have if you really look at it you would see a, a projection where right i mean to make uh, life simple this is what you would have seen and this is i'm not going to color because i don't have the, whatever color this pen does i have read maybe i'll have to go pick another color i i don't want to waste time on that but the idea is you see one square it's not a cube that you see because you see the projection and so you would have seen a a a, a square which has 3 cross 3 small squares if you are really able to pick it was this good right so it had so the analogous to x ray ct is this allowed us to project so whatever was there on one side right it got projected it let's let's take this example I had one side right i got this but this is nothing but a projection of all the see all the three so you have three cross three cross three rubik's right so it was going through this property so I, instead of three cubes i got the effect of all the three cubes so I, on the input side say for example i put orange right some x ray energy it goes through it goes through the three cube elements here which are green color so it had some property what you record or what falls on the detector is red so orange you send in red you get and the difference is because it is attenuated along the path so here you have three green cubes right so it is a lot but you see the challenge the challenge is actually i don't see the three of them along this so like you have three here you have three here you have three here which comes out to be the three cubes on the first row likewise you have the next row third row so essentially you have collapsed right all of them into a 3 cross 3 instead of 3 cross 3 into 3 right so essentially you don't see that depth information which was itself very powerful because you didn't see anything before that so now at least i can tell when you go when you send orange i get red so when it goes through this path this is the loss where exactly that loss is distributed within that we don't know it was just line integral but that itself was good enough right if you take a picture like this 
this itself was good enough for us i don't know if you can see so there is a logo right so this itself was good enough for us i could see some suspicious you know pixel and i can say that it is within this path it is within the center something has changed which was very good even though i couldn't tell apart uh, the front cube color to the back cube color right so i couldn't tell what is in the front or what is in the back but that was sufficient so lot of developments application took place but one of the fundamental limitation was you ended up seeing only a shadow of the 3d object so the first and foremost thing they wanted to do is is there a way we could actually go not just make, measure the square ideally i should get this cube i should be able to tell all the values right sitting from outside so just to make life easy because i cannot uh, break this into pieces so this is one piece right one one uh row if you want to call right this is my imaging so until in projection radiography we got a projection so it was this square that you were seeing whereas what we want is we want to actually see through the depth right we want to see through the depth so our images are going to be we call this as slice so we want this slice and the slice is going to represent how along the path the mu's are the attenuations are distributed this is what we want if we can do that for one slice if i can do that for other slice i can do for the third slice then actually i have the whole cube right so the idea is how do i get the depth along the depth how does the mu change that is the missing part so how do we typically do that so that is the biggest problem so knowing what we know right what information do we have so we started with say for example this red you saw the projection and it goes through this green i get an orange as recorded value right this goes into your detector and you see it as an image now what can i do in reality why we see this as a 3d object or oh, because if i keep it exactly you know to my eyesight line of eyesight and i don't uh, create any other uh, uh, if i if i don't tilt it then you will actually see it as only uh, red green you cannot tell the depth but then what happens uh, if i tilt it slightly right what happens if we tilt it slightly well if i if you do this right if i tilted it like this what do you see well if i did a good job with respect to right keeping it straight then you will see two colors red and yellow but you will still see only a projection of this you will not see the depth you will not see the depth of it you will see only the projection of it so in the only thing that you will see is oh, if that is length is a and this is a you are going to see probably you know square root of 2a this will be a so let's say this is a this is a so i will still see this as a but my width will be square root of 2 times a clear so then probably half of it i saw yellow color i mean it still it will be cube but from a, from our perspective uh whichever color i showed you doesn't matter okay i see two colors say yellow and green uh see i think this is what i showed yellow red and yellow right so you have red on one side again yellow on the other side but notice it's still projected it's still projected so then what can i do oh i if i so i had orange 
and red. So what if I do like this? I have another view. Red, right? I had one view like this, and then if I have like this, I just rotated by forty-five degrees. The view that you see, oh, the width has increased, but you still see the projection. So it's a rectangle with two colors. I do ninety degrees. What happens? Oh, I have a yellow. I I see it as right. You see a yellow square. This again will be A cross A, but yellow square. So the point is, depending on your view. So if you if you actually so the reason that you are able to see this as three B three D cube is when I have it like this, when I rotate it like that, right? And if I am able to record, so your eyes are doing it. So you are you are recording it, you are moving it, and you are registering it, and you are. your brain interprets and it starts to visualize it as 3d so the same process we can do even though projection radiography had a problem with the depth now what i have done is by looking at it from different views is still the same thing right we started out if i send r and z i send on one side it goes through the green comes to the other side as red right so if you take one of these uh, pixels one of these elements right it is along the path so it is still attenuating so if i went like this 90 degrees if you take this element now i send a white i get yellow i get i send some value i get another value but along this path it has reduced so for every element you see in one of the in all the paths right different angles that you want to go they would have contributed towards that attenuation okay so this is the interesting aspect so the challenge was how do i get the depth information so this was bothering them because they wanted to see the through slice they wanted to see what is there along the depth right so what they did is in ct they figured out if you can view it from multiple different directions and record the projections then there is enough mathematics that we can apply to get the what we call as reconstruction right enough mathematics to get the slice that is the distribution along the line okay so uh, i mean it will take some time i think this is an important thought process you need to start to do because rest of it will fall in place nicely because it's all about uh, at that point of time if you have enough information knowledge on what's happening you will i'm sure you and i will also innovate with new credits it was challenging but i think we have the privilege and luxury to actually look back right after it's all done to say oh it's easy <laughs> so let's enjoy that process okay so what we will cover is a very factual material so this is the logic the logic is until projection radiography what we covered is we know the physics you send on one side you receive on the other side along the path there is attenuation and now the objective is oh i am not happy that this is the attenuation along this path i want to know if there is a change what is the different attenuation values along the path not just the total that is our goal in order to do that the idea is you have to get different views if you can get different views then maybe we can reconstruct so how would, so instrumentation is going to be geared towards that okay uh let me put the first generation and uh, kind of give this proposition so you have a patient right that you want to image you have the source on one side the detector on the other side okay so through transmission what is uh, slightly different here oh what is slightly different is in projection radiography we talked about the whole chest right so in principle uh, we could have we should have talked about our detector also being an array if that is the case then the cube example is good enough 
but you have to understand that uh, uh, x ray itself was developed and all the clinical applications came this this idea of depth was bothering them but then what is their output oh, output is photography film all right that was a market that was evol uh, you know evolving and maturing and so photography so their output in some sense you didn't measure it was the output was display right so optical density x ray was converted to optical density and viewed so all that development in material science and uh, the ecosystem for making a scanner and uh, the clinical participation matured over 50 years 60 years so then they said look if we want to do this if i want to measure from different views and then be able to apply mathematics on it so i have to do computation on it oh if i have a analog right i have this film that is exposed i get x ray film in different uh, uh, views right i cannot really do computation on that right so the challenge was even though it is straight forward to think that if you have uh, a detector where you can record this then we could take it but they didn't have computation right it was starting your electron semiconductor devices started coming your diode started coming all post world war 2 right and then your computers started to mature so in that sense it was not until remember the intro not until 70s right for the work they got a nobel prize for in, in 72 or something so it's the 70s where after 50s 60s you had all the components so the detector so what you see here is a the detector is not x ray film in projection radiography that was the case now you have to record the signal and so that you are you have to do reconstruction compute so you cannot just have a x ray film that is developed okay so your recording of the signal so you need sensors all that kind of uh, readout circuit uh, registration you have to have uh, you know you have to scan so you have to have translation rotations all that kind of that ecosystem with uh, electronics are also parallelly developing computing was parallelly developing so it took about 70s before there was a maturity in the 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 uh electronics and uh, you know mechanical design developments and motors and things like that before they could put a system together okay so what you see even in the first generation is it's not 2d array i mean you it's not just digitizing your uh, projection radiography life would be simple so that time what they had is they knew this business of x ray tube and you send x ray tube uh the x rays through the body you have to have a detector on the other side so they got the detector on the other side so then uh all they knew from the physics is from the detector sorry from the source to the detector the line joining them right whatever is there in the path that is the attenuation along the path that is going to come the line integral is what you are going to detect so the easiest way for them to discretize this is they had one detector one source so they stepped this is translation so they moved from left to right right so if you take this cube right i had only one i had only one detector one one source one path line i had the detector on the other side so i had only one element so if i have to get this cube what should i do oh i should move that move that so if i move three times uh, then i get right i'm trying to uh, when i do three times what i get one row so one row if i get that means all this is collapsed along this path so now i want the same tissue region i have to view it from different location so you can rotate the 90 degree rotation is simple i said right so you can step in any direction right any step size for different views so the idea here is this knowledge was there what we call this as a pencil beam very narrow beam it is like a pencil right 
So now, if I have to scan the patient, if I have to get this 3 cross 3 in this example of white, what the values are, then, so I am going to get only one slice, right, only one slice, the one, one row. So I am going to do one, translate, translate, I can do many, right, I have to translate many times depending on what, how, what is the field of view. And then I have to rotate for different view and again, after one rotation, I will have to again do the scanning. So I have both translate and rotate. So brute force, you went there, translated, got data, you had something on the detector. Then rotate, translate, you get the, so you make all these measurements, right? You know the positions, where, where the detector is, where the uh, sources, where the detector, this you know. So where you are recording all the measurements, positions you know, where you measure you know. Then you have to do computation. So the logic was, use a pencil beam, which was translated to get one projection. So here you notice, what do we mean by one projection? So, you are going to get one point, right, one, one pixel. So, if I want one slice, I have to have many of them. So, line, I project one, I get one pixel, move, translate, next one, translate, next one. So, I kind of get a line projection, right. So, I get linearly to get one projection. So, the source detector is rotated by small angles and you repeat this. So you are going to get this uh, one line, right, from different views, okay. So this is your one uh, first generation setup. What is the advantage? Advantage is you can probably see brute force, you know this physics, if I send here, if I receive here. I know the path is only, the, the, the attenuation is only along this line path. So if I move this, translate it, probably I will go through, depending on my step size and view step size, I will probably go through smaller locations, right, and I will still get data. So from the detector point of view, you notice, I am going to send only this, right, along the line, it is so narrow. So I, I don't really have to bother about your Compton scattering because even if it scatters, you have only one, uh, one beam. So that signal is recorded here. If it Compton scattering is there, it probably you are not going to pick several of them. So in that sense, you don't really need a collimator. Okay. So with the model of line integral that we saw in projection radiography, the physics, I think this kind of helped them achieve, when this is plugged into your reconstruction, it achieved, made them get the slicer. So the disadvantage, of course, you have to cover the entire thing, after 360, so you have three, the idea is you get from all around 360 degrees, but you notice uh, if I uh, say for example, we talked about send orange, I get red through the yellows, okay. If I go completely the other way after 180 degree, what is happening? Oh, I will send red, I will get orange along the same path, the same path participated, right. So in some sense, after three 180 degrees, you are not getting a new view. It is the same line path you will get. And therefore, even though you cover 360 degree, you want to cover such that after 180 degrees, you, you do not want to get the same information again, okay. So that has to be ensured, but otherwise the idea is you get multiple rotation is done. So good news about this is, good news about this is the image quality, because you do not have collimator, uh, you can the scattering is not an issue, you just send one beam, there is no scattering that you have to worry about and therefore, uh, this is simple, straightforward, uh, the detection is also reasonable, so you have, you get some, say for example, you get some ima image quality, let us say, 
image itself is new because it is going to give you for the first time information through the slicer. Okay. So, whatever image quality that you have, it is as long as you see what you see, which you did not see before, it is already a, a huge step. So, you had some acceptable image quality to begin with, but the major challenge was uh, you know, you have to really move, translate, rotate, and translate. So, to gather this mechanical translation and rotation, it took time. How much time? It was in the order of about minutes, 5 minutes, 6 minutes kind of deal. Of course, it depends on the field of view and your step size, rotation step size, all that you know, put. But roughly, it is in the order of several minutes, 5 6 minutes just to do the data collection, not accounting for after you get the data, you have to do the reconstruction. Okay, so that is not what it, just the data collection. Okay, but it allowed you the first generation, it allowed you to see for the first time what is there through the slice. Okay, so that was a huge step. So, if you were right working on this in the 60s and 70s, 70s when you know they put the first system together. If you already are an engineer working, what would you do? Right? What would you do? First and foremost would be, well, I see new things, but 5 minutes, 6 minutes is still order of minutes. How can I improvise? How can I improvise and uh, reduce that time? Right? So, the logic would be, instead of, uh, logic would be, instead of having uh, only one at a time and then scanning, right? Why do not we have few more of these detectors, right? Why do not I have few more of these detectors so that at one shot I can have few parallel lines, okay? So, in some sense, at that point of time, if you are the engineer, you have worked out this ecosystem, you put this uh, thing. One of the major bottlenecks could be, oh, your acquisition time is order of minutes. How do I reduce it? Can we improve that further? Instead of having one detector, can I have simultaneously deduct few more detectors, right? Therefore, I can reduce the number of steps I need to do, rotation of steps. So, they had few more detectors next to each other. Of course, your pencil beam, instead of pencil beam, we wanted to send a, a small fan. It is not complete, but then you see that it is wider than your pencil beam was narrow. So, this is already diverging, but then you had more number of detectors. So, in one go, you could get multiple lines, right? So, if you so detect this, if you so arrange this, few angles you already pick. Right, because this is at angle, right? So, few different angles you already pick from one location. So, now the job is maybe I could step better, maybe I could rotation step, right? I could uh, uh, be little more uh, lenient because I, in one step I already have, depending on the arrangement of this, what angles are covered in one fan beam. I can skip those, right? So, in that sense, same geometry, same everything else, instead of one to one, they kind of loosened this, had few more. What did that have? That impact? Oh, that impacted the data acquisition time. How did it impact? It brought down the time naturally, right? Because you, you your number of stepping size was reduced, number of steps that you need to do reduced because in one go you got few more. Okay. So, it did have a very good effect. This enables acquiring projections from multiple angles simultaneously and therefore, you could do fast. Okay. So, therefore, a large angle can be stepped through for rotation. So, you could actually see uh, one part of you as an engineer says, wow, now you know I have reduced the time. This was the challenge posed to me. I have come up with a strategy, I was able to, you know, I had a vendor who could do the uh, source, x-ray tube has been there from before. So, the detector somehow 
we have multiple detectors there is there is vendor who know how to manufacture give me few uh, different detectors that are next to each other so i have solved the problem but then when you do this what are the physics uh, issues that come in oh when you had pencil beam the you had some quality so now you go tell your doctor i have reduced your time he will be happy but then he wants to make sure that what happens to the image quality that is an important aspect so what do you think is going to be the are you going to gain image quality lose in image quality what do you think is going to happen you are conveniently gain, gaining time the reducing the time for acquisition but uh, what about the quality any comments well you look at it what is the proposition you are going to have multiple beams right that are that are going to multiple lines of right that is going to go source to detector so in pencil beam first generation you had only one line so there was no question of uh, the the you know uh, angular incidence compton scattering getting detected whereas here if i don't make extra effort i could pick right multiple i could pick it pick from other angles so one of the things is oh we know this we solved it before so we will put collimators so we will address that uh, uh, you know we will uh, address that problem so they had to use collimators but what did that do that essentially did one thing is okay you put collimator when we talked about this collimation in detector right uh, uh, when we talked about the physics and the instrumentation what was the deal oh the problem is the signal to noise ratio is important so you had compton scattering but when you try to reduce that your detection your 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 efficiency also goes down so now because you are not allowing all the signal you are you are you have some threshold you have some tolerance you are accepting only through that so what happens is you are for the same if you will for the same number of projections that you would use in your first generation if you use it here the quality goes down because of your compton scattering is now coming into picture okay so the image quality goes down so in order to overcome that they kind of increase the dose slightly the exposure slightly so when they ex- increase the exposure slightly so you can so from a image quality point of view you are now slightly compromising on the safety aspect but it is still safe i mean you have to look at uh, 70s 80s when they were doing this they didn't have i mean all the things were parallelly valuing right so how much dose how should we do all that were also uh, parallelly happening uh, so they said okay this is still okay we'll have a slight increase in exposure but we'll get the about the same quality as your first generation but more importantly you have significant gain in your time so what are we talking about from minutes you were able to get it down to some tens of seconds like 20 30 seconds 40 seconds in that range so it was a significant reduction right so now you see the so now you get this feedback you are the engineer you go back you say oh, look my competitor we have this edge we can sell this it's only 20 30 seconds we can get the data so it's not that bad for you know reasonable adult we could even ask them to hold their breath while you are taking the scan so that you can reduce motion artifact so it was fun right good problem solved then what do you do then you say oh i want to work on the next product what are the challenges i am happy that it came down to 20 30 seconds 40 seconds but i am greedy what will i do oh by that time you have a ecosystem all the materials right manufacturing is improving instead of only few detectors why cannot i have more of them right how many more well instead of having 8 to 16 it's incremental what i want to do is i want to get the next best, best uh, scanner out next generation out what will i do i will say you know what here i translate and rotate what if i have capacity to put detectors right sorry right i have capacity to put the detectors so that i entirely avoid the idea of translation 
I will only rotate. So, I will increase the fan angle so that it covers the entire patient in one go. So, I avoid the translation and I can have look at the increase in complexity and cost, right? Because now you have so many detectors, small detectors that are placed next to each other to cover the whole line, right? But the advantage is, oh, I could get multiple lines recorded at the same time. So, I do not need to do translation. I will just worry about doing uh, rotation. So, I could significantly reduce the time even further. So, I could get it in the order of seconds data acquisition. The recon part we will come. This is just recording the data, right? So, the idea is fantastic. I could still say this is a good advancement where I have reduced the time even more significantly. But is there then the natural question is what happens to the quality? Are you losing somewhere? Well, you notice even in the second generation when you had multiple lines, you had to do collimator. So, the effect of collimator is going to be there. So, starting up front, your image quality, right? Because you are going to have Compton scattering effect, that is going to have a negative, you have to account for that. Adding to it, you have many elements which are, now the element size is small, you are, you are packing many elements. So, the detector efficiency also goes down slightly. So, everything said and done, you get significant reduction in time, but then you have, you have really increased the cost and to get the same quality, right, like your before uh, generations, uh, you have to increase the exposure slightly. But again, this is one of those, uh, you have to look at it from that era, right. So, you started seeing CT, you started, people are now going to use, start to see slices of a kidney or abdomen through liver, which they did not see any time before. Now, they are able to start to see it, right. So, their concern is, can we see it, see these new things at a quality that we are now trained. But if you can, you know, increase the speed, throughput, even if there is a slight increase in exposure, that is fine. The, the, the benefit outweighs the risk. So, this is again very popular generation that generation of CT scanner that uh, really pushed the CT to mainstream where a lot of applications start to follow up. Because note, notice, I mean, you are now talking about uh, not even a, a, a big breath hold, right? Uh, you could just uh, hold on for a breath for a few seconds and you, are, you can take uh, the data. So, it is very significant advantage in that regard. So, fine, you are the guy who joined now the, uh, you know, uh, biomedical engineer who has joined. You are working, your, your boss is working in the third generation. You are the engineer who are working on this detail. You are going to become the project lead and you want to get to the next generation. What would you suggest? What would be your approach? Well, by looking at all this, one, two and now third, what else can I do? Right? What else can I do? Now, I am rotating my source and detector, right? This geometry, I am, I am rotating both the source and detector. So, next you are going to say, why should I rotate both? I have my detector technology evolving, right? And why instead of rotating, what if I can arrange this instead of just line? What if I can arrange this around the uh, circle? 